My favorite wood for doing hollow forms is mesquite. Uh, I didn't have any mesquite that was anywhere near wet or green. So I did have some ash that I picked up across the street in my neighborhood. And it's a little bit wet, and so it turns fairly well, but it's... As you get deeper, sometimes you need a bigger tool or a longer handle helps sometimes. If I'd started with the 3 8 um, hollower, I probably would uh, have had to change by now to a larger one, which is the half inch is larger. Okay. I could uh, do more of that if you like, but I think it'd be good to go on the inside, do a little bit of, of uh, teardrop, and then I'll work on a lid for you. And this one, you have to set the tool rest back quite a bit. It does have a flat bottom on it, for whoever asked that question earlier. And this is one of those handles you can just keep adding sections and and uh, go on and on and on. Um, I'm really not going to be able to use this because it won't fit in that hole. I'll do a little bit of it. And I have the handle on it. I'm going to try this to see how it holds up. And all you're really doing here is um, smoothing up the rough edges. It, sometimes it's a little rough from uh, the small hollowing tool. And it's used pretty much the same way. You just tuck it under. And it did cut quite a bit with a little bit I put it in there. So it's a lot smoother. Okay, I'm going to put uh, a different chuck on. And I'm going to work on a, uh, on a lid. I typically use a contrasting wood, and I didn't have ebony like I did on the others. So I'm going to try mesquite. Mesquite might chip on me. Sometimes it's a little brittle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill it out. Again, I'm going to start with the same bit, and I'm going to slow the lathe down pretty slow. Let me 
it usually doesn't need to be very deep with this first cut. About a three eighths of an inch is what you want the depth to be. And that fits perfect. Okay, that's just about right. Okay, now the next step on a lid is you need to shape it however you want to shape it. You can leave it square if it's square, you can round it, whatever you want to do. And line up my numbers. <laughs> and when y'all were busy watching, I glued this up epoxied it and I'm going to spin it on a, um, a, a, a sacrificed half of one of these brass pieces and I made a holder for it that's far enough away from the chuck where it's not in your way so mm -hmm. Back to the bowl gouge or spindle gouge or whatever you want to use. I typically use a bowl gouge on most of this. One thing I kind of miss from my Powermatic is the RPM meter. I like the lathe here, I love it, but um, I kind of miss that. typically round it and then I work on the face clean it up a little bit uh, when those, when you have those corners 
you can break them off if you're not careful. Unless, of course, you're going to make a square lid. And you can embellish it, you can, well, sand it, finish it, embellish it, whatever you want to do. But for tonight's purposes, take it off. And um, let me have one of those with the black lid on, please. And this is mesquite on mesquite, but it'll then fit right on to Merlin's urn. And with a finish on it, it'd be matching since they're both mesquite, but um, that's pretty much the project. Um, I've got a few other tools we can discuss if you'd like. Would you tell us again where you get the brass? The brass I got on Amazon, sometimes eBay, but they're basically the Porter Cable router inserts. Um, here's a package. This package came from Amazon. I purchased these from $6 to $4 down, you know, the price. And um, it's not a real good picture, but that's what it is. Any other questions? David. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you uh, Where did you get your book? I was looking it up online. It's uh, it's the must book, be an old book. I got it on Amazon, probably. Uh, Chris Stott is the author. I went on Amazon while you were talking and looked at it. It was $128, so I'm not interested. I didn't pay $128. Well, I know it must you be out of print. Yeah, that's. We've had a little discussion here on the chat about the uh, size of an urn, the height and the diameter uh, to make it easy for everybody for a 200 cubic inch uh, urn for an adult. So um, there's been a little bit of a discussion about uh, uh, with the formula of a cylinder, uh, what height and diameter does that work out to be to make it easy for everybody? Neil, um, if you look at that spreadsheet, um, you, it's automatic. You just tell it uh, the number of pounds, you put in the uh, radius, and it tells you what the height would be. So, okay. you know, that way you can make it. And the thing is, like the one David made there, it's not a cylinder. It's it's uh, the sides are curved. You know, they're the it's less diameter the bottom than the top. Right. So, so you probably well, just take the average. Yeah. So you just have to kind of estimate it from that. So that spreadsheet kind of helps with that. It kind of tells you, um, um, you know, how how big you'd make it if it were a cylinder. And of course, those are inside diameters. Right. And so yeah. what would be Neil? Yeah. For two hundred cubic inches, that would be approximately. Uh, uh, what size? Well, it depends what right radius you want. If you had a four inch radius, it turns out to be about four inches high. So that would be eight inch diameter, four inches high, but that would be probably not the shape you'd want. So right. you can put whatever radius you want in. If you want a two inch radius, so it'd be four inch diameter, it would tell you what that was too. Okay. Now, before your pet dies or whatever, and you're not sure, but you know how much your pet weighs or your loved one weighs roughly, you can always do it with rice and check it out. So the formula for 10 pounds was, um, two, was 0.69, which is close to um, two-thirds of a cup. This is a one-third cup measuring cup. So you just you can put it in there, and you can see what it, how big of an urn it really is. And um, might be the safest way if you're selling them and 
This one is going to hold about a full cup, which makes it 14.44 roughly. Or a little more. 14.44 what? Pounds. Okay. But it's a little more than that. But it's just a self-check. And if you would sell these, you'd certainly want to know that it's big enough or whatever. The, the minimum size wood probably is 3x3x5. Three by three by and that does a pretty small shape. It's not very, not very, uh, very much shape to that. So that's another, that's a minimum. Neil, how would we be able to download that spreadsheet? Um, can we put that on uh, on the web page? I think so. Yeah, we can put it on the web page. Yeah. Download it, or I you probably just download it from there. Yeah. We can put it on a web page when we get done. I'll, it'll be under the demo, under documents. Okay. Anybody Any have questions? any other uh, questions uh, now for David? <laughs>